Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Business Incorporated, coming to you live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Obi. Well, we're coming up on the show. Nigeria's external trade in the fourth quarter of 2016 valued at 5.28 trillion naira. South Africa's economy contrasts by 0.3% in the fourth quarter of 2016. Plus, Ethiopia's inflation rises to 7.0% in February. Now let's get started. Nigeria's external trade in the fourth quarter of 2016 was valued at 5.28 trillion naira. That's according to the National Bureau of Statistics in its latest Merchandise Trade Intensity Index re-export report for fourth quarter of 2016. The NBS says the export component stood at 2.97 trillion naira, while the import component stood at 2.30 trillion naira, leading to a trade surplus of 671.3 billion naira. A further breakdown of the figures show that crude oil exports had the largest share of the total trade, accounting for 2.42 trillion naira trade in fourth quarter of 2016. The second major contributor to total trade by sector was manufactured goods with 1.16 trillion naira, followed by non-crude oil products with 1.15 trillion naira. And in South Africa, the economy contracted by 0.3% in the fourth quarter of 2016. That's after expanding by a revised 0.4% in the third quarter. Data from Statistics South Africa shows gross domestic product rose 0.7% on an unadjusted year-on-year -year basis in the fourth quarter, compared with 0.7% expansion in the previous three months. Economists had expected a quarter-on-quarter -quarter GDP expansion of 0.5%, while the economy was seen expanding 0.6% year-on-year. The economy grew by 0.3% in 2016, as compared with 1.3% in 2015. And to the market, starting here in Africa, now, all the market indices were looking green at intraday, but for Nairobi, which closed negative on Monday, Egypt was the best performer, up by 0.83%. NSC index and JSC were both up 0.45% and 0.09% each. In the Middle East, most markets were down at intraday with blue chip, MR properties pulling down Dubai and Qatar's index sinking as two major stocks were ex-dividend. Dubai index was down 1.53% as EMA lost 3.3% after it proposed a cash dividend of 15% for 2016, unchanged from the previous year despite a 28% rise in annual net profit. Qatar's index slid 1.94% as Doha Bank plunged its 10% daily limit and Qatar Electricity and Water lost 3.9%, both went ex-dividend. The index was major, has major technical support around 10,500 points where the February lows coincide with the December peaks. Abu Dhabi, which was flat, and Saudi Arabia, which edged up 0.47%, outperformed the region much activity in Riyadh focused on second or third tier stocks favored by local retail speculators with Solidarity Takaful and Islamic insurers surging 5.9% in an unusual heavy trade. In Europe, investors are digesting new economic data, corporate news coming in, and of course are optimistic of a new interest rate hike in the U.S., as early as this month. Our market expectations for a rate hike announcement in the U.S. next week stood at 86.4% um, today. Meanwhile, investors continue to closely follow political events across Europe where uncertainty has dominated. But joining us, well, we'll begin with the corporate news. French EDF, a nuclear power company, is announcing capital raising of about 4 billion euros to expand operations, while Agreco, also an energy company, is also announcing a disappointing fourth quarter result and outlook for 2017. Talk us through uh, some of these corporate news out of Europe today. 
Well, it seems like Greco was just a bad quarter here. They suffered mostly from weak oil prices. They're not the only ones there. Interesting is, of course, the story of uh, EDF, Electricité de France, is uh, the biggest power producer in France. And yes, they are trying to raise another $4 billion capital. And uh, they're doing it specifically they, because they need it uh, for an investment in England in a new nuclear power plant there. Uh, they uh, do not have uh, the capital to invest themselves anymore after last uh, year was uh, a weak year for them. Lackluster electricity uh, productions here and a prolonged halt as it says here in their press release at, uh, as well at some of the atomic plants. So they have some internal problems that do not currently allow them to make that investment by themselves. So they're raising new capital. And it's interesting, we just had a similar uh, thing here yesterday in Germany when Deutsche Bank tried to raise capital too, or they announced that they're trying to raise it uh, soon over the next couple of weeks, eight billion in this case. And they need that to satisfy new and tighter regulations on bank capitalization in uh, Europe and the world over. Now they always said they would not need new capital. Well, they probably always knew that they needed it, but nobody would lend it to them and now as we all know after the reporting of the last couple of weeks Deutsche Bank has put a lot of multi-billion dollar scandals behind them and they see themselves now in a much better position for, so, to ask for that capital so capital raising uh, yesterday and today one of the bigger topics here in Frankfurt now another corporate news of course that came in yesterday was from the automobile that's Peugeot agreeing a deal with General Motors to buy Opel for 2.2 billion euros, creating a new regional car giant to challenge market leader Volkswagen. You were at Opel's briefing yesterday. What were they saying? Well, they said specifically, here's one quote I very well remember, we have to fight for our jobs. People at Opel are 